Hello and welcome to SIA TV Episode 2. My name is Helen Croxford and I'm the President of Sport Inclusion Australia and what a great job that is I have. I thought Episode 1 was fabulous. I really enjoyed watching the athletes on the big screen. It was terrific to have them involved. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to uh, the SIA team for putting the video together. I think they've done a wonderful job and I look forward to watching episode two. My name's Carla and I love playing long balls and my favourite singer is Taylor Swift. And I went to a concert last year, she touched my hand. I like playing long balls because I like meeting like all the different types of people and playing with all the groups around the places like this. My dream is competing in like the disability um, Commonwealth Games for lawn balls. When I play lawn balls, it actually makes me feel happy and excited to play. It feels really, really good. My advice for anyone, don't give up and just play your favourite sport, like I just did. Good morning, everyone. My name's Dean. And welcome to the second instalment of the Sports Inclusion Australia Fitness Series. Today, uh, with my assistant Georgia, I'll take you through a range of exercises to progress from what we started in the first segment. Hopefully you enjoy it and get something out of it. And we hope you're all staying safe and well in the lockdown period. Thanks. This exercise is called a rear foot elevated split squat, some, sometimes referred to as a Bulgarian split squat. It's going to be a progression from our first uh, exercise series of a split squat in place. It's going to challenge you a little bit more through the glutes, hamstrings, a little bit more through the quads and help build some more lower body strength as we progress. So with the rear foot elevated split squat, you'll notice that George's back foot is elevated about knee height. So you may want to use uh, either a bench if you've got one, a chair, a couch, whatever you have, uh, be creative. And it's a really easy one to do pretty well anywhere, provided you've got something to, to use at the right height. She should feel quite a lot of loading through her hamstring, glutes, quads, a little bit through her core, and maybe a little bit through the calf as well. Really good exercise to work on balance, strength, and help prevent injury. So with this one, you want to go through between eight to 12 reps each leg two to three times each side, and then progress to the next. Sports have given me many opportunities to represent my state and to represent Australia, to be able to go overseas and meet deaf people from all over the world. My name is Bronte Marshall. I row for Belmain Rain Club and last year I've represented Australia in the 2019 Inner Global Games. I came home with four gold and one silver. I've represented Australia in both outdoor and indoor rowing. We used this earth for the indoor rowing. Prior to the rowing, I've also represented Australia in swimming. I went to Mexico three years ago and I came home with one gold, one silver, one bronze. I know it's been tough during the pandemic, but using this herb to keep me fit is worth it. Thank you. High performers in sport or even at work are aware of the mind-body connection. There is countless research to show that the positive emotions that you experience impact your immune system. They supercharge your physiological being and they improve your whole state of wellness. So your mindset is a really critical part to being well. And you've heard of the saying, change your mind, change your life. So a big part of how I cultivate a positive mindset is I look at sometimes certain affirmations that I would like to believe and almost see around my house or my workstation to prompt and trigger positive thinking. So for example, if you wanted to be more motivated in your exercises, or if you wanted to feel more motivation in doing your exercises, 
then it might serve for you to have up around your computer or near a light switch or even on your mirror in your bathroom, places where you typically would go, a simple affirmation. And maybe that affirmation says something like, I am motivated to do daily exercise. Or it might say, I am committed to finishing my exercises. And these little visual prompts and visual triggers, they rewire our minds and they remind us to stay positive, almost act as if we're going to do it anyway. It's a really clever way of keeping positive in your mindset, but more importantly, it sends signals to your body that you are supercharging your immune system and that you are well. Jack was about eight years old when he started um, swimming competitively. We got Jack into swimming because it was something that he always enjoyed and he was good at it. What I love about swimming is staying fit and the competition. Jack's a fantastic addition to, to my squad. Great commitment, dedication and the routine that swimming has brought to, to his life is a fantastic addition. And that goes back to really the parental support and, and the people that have looked after him has led to the athlete that we see before us now. The Next Gen Athlete program has been a great initiative. Um, Jack's been fortunate to be a recipient, a scholarship recipient of that program. And that's helped us with some travel, some coaching, some gear, and all of those things that come along with competitive swimming. Rather than focusing on any disability that may be there, we look for the good, we look for the abilities because I think every kid deserves to feel successful and swimming brought that to Jack. I like all sports but golf is just something you can do for yourself. It makes me happy being out there. I like to meet new people and try to concentrate on my golf. Hi there, it's Harry Mezgi here. Due in isolation, I've been very busy doing lots of cycling. My longest ride that I've done was 101 kilometers. That is a long way. Um, also, down at Pont Leo that I'm at at the moment, there's lots of hills. So I've been getting lots of great training in with the hills and lots of k's in. So now I've got to go off. See you later, guys. As you can see, I'm down at Point Leo Beach, is where I like to exercise and go for runs in the sand, go for swims, and take my dog for a walk. Also, what I've been up to is I've been studying online in my with my diploma of sports development at Swinburne University, and also I've been um, learning, teaching myself how to speak German, and that's been an, a great adventure. Uh, Running wise, I've been, I run 40 kilometers a week and my longest run in isolation is 35 kilometers. It's a long way and I'm also going back to Point where I've been here since uh, isolation commenced. So it's, that's basically since Easter. And my number one tip for all of you guys is to stay busy and to have fun. Sign enough, I'm gonna take my dog for a walk and see you later. Good morning, it's Harry here. I'm about to go for a swim in the open water at Point Leo Beach. Let's get going. Everybody stay safe and stay connected. The next exercise we're going to go through is called swimmers. Essentially this is going to build some strength and resilience through your posterior shoulder, which is going to keep your, your posture nice and healthy um, and balance out any pushing work we do. So here she's going to start with her hands behind her head, she's going to raise her elbows off the ground, she's going to extend her arms up into make a Y shape. And she's going to pull them all the way back around. She's going to turn her thumbs. 
she's going to bring them together, place them on her hips, and she's going to lower her elbows down towards the ground. Then she's going to reverse the motion for the other way. So with this one, you want to take as long as you can to complete each rep, and then you'll feel quite a burning sensation through the back of the shoulder, which is really important to help build some strength through what's a muscle group called the rotator cuff. So with this one, you want to go between about six and eight reps to begin with, and then you can build that up over time. Shouldn't need any weight with this one. It's a, it's a bit of a uh, deceptive, tricky one. I first got into cycling when I was about 16. I won a school competition and was selected to compete in the Global Games in Italy in 2009. I have been lucky to represent my country in three Global Games, plus hopefully many more, and I've also represented myself in national championships and state championships. Here are my team jackets and medals. The first event I did was 2009 in Czech Republic. I won two bronze and one silver. The second event I did was 2011 in Italy. I won a bronze medal. The next event I did was 2019 Global Games in Brisbane. I won one silver and two bronze. The next event I did was 2020 National Championships, Road Championships. I won a gold medal in the time trial. I've also competed in state championships, and this is for state track. I won three gold medals out of three. During lockdown, I have been riding three or four days a week, normally around 250 kilometers a week. I also do some weight training and try and eat lots of fruit and drink lots of water. I've tried to do a few track sessions at my club, which is Brunswick Cycling Club, which have been really good. For more downtime, downtime I enjoy watching Netflix and playing video games. If you have a bike, get on it and enjoy the sunshine while you can. I hope you enjoyed the show. Join me for the next episode of See You TV. It's going to be even bigger and better. Stay safe, stay home and stay fit. Competition will be back soon. Will you be ready? I, for one, cannot wait to put the green and gold jersey back on again to represent my country. Stay connected and stay strong. We live in a really busy world and sometimes it can put a lot of pressure on our nervous system. We can be a little bit stressed and anxious at times. And so us humans, we live in two states. We're either in a state of fight or flight, where we're looking to continually protect ourselves, we're on high alert, we're looking for safety and making sure that we can survive, or we're in a rest and digest state, which is when we're a little bit more calm, relaxed, and we give our body an opportunity to rejuvenate good, healthy cells. The challenge is, with a busy world and busy lives, we're far too often in a fight or flight state. And that puts a lot of pressure on your nervous system. So I'm gonna give you a tool now, which is a breathing exercise, to help remind you that at any time, you can tell your nervous system it's time to chill out. And the beautiful thing about breath is, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which automatically sends signals to your brain, it's time to rest and digest. See, we're very clever, but we've got to remember to do the breathing. So let me give you, first of all, a very simple tip around breath. It only takes four seconds to take a breath. And in four seconds, it's enough to send a signal to the mind, it's time to rest. And what I want you to do when you breathe is I want you to think about breathing from your belly. So not breathing shallow from up here in our chest, but breathing from the depths of our belly. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take a deep breath in four seconds. Breathe in and out. Again, breathe in and out. And in four seconds, you are sending a signal to your brain, it's time to rest. A really important tool and something you can do at any time of the day. Check out breathing exercises on Google or on any websites and learn some different techniques on how you can turn into 
rest and digest throughout the day and not stay in fight or flight mode. Give it a go. The next exercise we're going to go through is a progression from your push-up in stage one. We're going to add a rotation component, which is going to help build some mobility through the upper back and again, some, some freedom through that shoulder area. Great for anyone that's been spending time sitting down at home and might be hunched over and, and needs to open up their, their posture. So you'll find Georgia in a push-up position, nice and strong again from head to heel. She's going to push up and then she's going to rotate, touch the roof. Try and keep really strong through her upper back here. Perfect. You notice how she's not letting her hips drop, she's staying really still and stable there. This one, again, it's a little bit more tricky than it may look. She's a pretty good demo. You want to go through about eight to 10 reps total, which is going to be about four to five each side. The theme this episode's been around mind-body connection and as a regular practitioner of meditation, I would like to share with you the importance of the mental training. So I'm sure many of you who are watching SIA TV are very aware of the physical training needed to keep your body in good shape. Or well, just like that, we also need to keep our mind in good shape. And so meditation is simply that. It's about doing the mental training so that we can cultivate more focus more calmness and overall happy vibes. Now during these times of COVID and all this social distancing, all this change that I've certainly been experiencing just like you, I'm really seeing the benefits of my daily practice of meditation showing me how important it is during times of stress and uh, overwhelm. So what I've done is I've created a special challenge and the challenge is called the 66 day meditation challenge now this challenge there's over a thousand people already doing it and i would love to offer it to all of the family and friends at sia tv the reason it's 66 days is because it takes 66 days to fully embed a habit and i know many people have always wanted to try meditation but they've never really been able to make it stick so if you really want to make a habit stick you need to be at it for 66 days and what I've done is I've designed 10 minute guided meditations that land straight into your inbox if you choose to sign up. And you can practice them at any time of the day that suits you. At the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, or maybe in the middle of the day when you just feel like you need a little bit of energizing or a bit of a pep up. So the details are below on the screen and uh, you will see how to sign up for the challenge. And uh, I'd love for you to join us and um, really cultivate that mental training and the exercise of the mind that gives us all of those great benefits of a focused, calm, happy life. I think you have to really not only love your sport, um, whether that be swimming, rowing, or whatever you love to do, I think you really need to have that drive and that passion to want to win. You know, what drives me every morning is I love to get up at four o'clock in the morning and go to training and swim. Um, it fulfills my life and I feel like swimming gives my life a purpose. So if I didn't have that, I would find it quite hard to do what I do every day. All you gotta do is just like, you know, get out there, you know, just do your best and um, hopefully you succeed. All you gotta do is just push. It doesn't always matter, like, you know, negativity, positive, and you just gotta keep pushing. Well, first I'm trying to achieve the Paralympics, then I want to go on to like uh, greater things too, like college, like uh, hopefully I can swim there. What I love about swimming is doing my feast time in the water and my medley. I love swimming because it's my passion. My families and the directors and coaches, they all cheer me up, so that motivates me. I want to get good records and I'll, I'll do my best. Please tell everybody about the next episode, have a look online, tell your friends. In the meantime, 
Uh, try and stay safe. I know it's really difficult in these times. Stay connected as best you can with your friends and family. And most importantly, stay safe, keep well.